Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Mefford. I'm the editor of Growing for Market Magazine. And I'm here today to remind you not to underestimate the power of insulation. So whether you're building an office like we just did or building a packing shed or any other kind of farm structure that you wanna maintain at an even temperature, insulation is gonna be your friend. So um, this is our brand new solar office. We were planning on being in there and using it today. Last week, we started to use it and we had some of those mid 90 degree days and it ended up being just as hot, if not hotter inside the office as it was outside. It was really unbearable. And so we realized that because we're in central Maine, we tend to think of insulation as for the cold part of the year. And I was reminded that insulation also helps maintain a consistent building temperature in the warm part of the year as well. So if you are more a farmer and less of a builder, just like I am, uh, let me take you through our projects really quickly because I think we hit on a pretty good uh, solution that was fairly fast to put up and not that expensive to, uh, to insulate our building. All right, so this is the state that our whole, um, our whole office was in last week. We just got a plank wood siding and we got a vape, vapor barrier up here. And um, actually just putting, putting my hand on that wall, it is a sunny day. I can feel it's really quite warm. I can feel the heat coming off of the, the wall without any insulation there. So this is exactly why we did this, to block the heat or cold from coming just straight through into the office. And so... So that's what we were noticing with just the whole office like this. Um, it was just, the temperature was just fluctuating really fast and really unpleasantly. And so we were at this point where we were planning on using the office this week. And then we, we couldn't because it was too uncomfortable. So we're like, okay, how the heck do we get this thing insulated and finished off in as little time as possible and as little budget as possible because this project is over budget which unsurprisingly everything is more expensive right now but we definitely had to uh figure out a way to land this baby without spending too much more more money so what we we're not builders we talked to we have a number of friends who are good builders and so we talked to them about it and what they recommended is what we did which is this is rock wool it is melted down rock that is spun into um fiber so it really is what it sounds like it's like it's like wool made out of rock which is nice because it's not plastic it's inert and uh it'll last last a really long time and the other convenient thing about it is it comes in these sheets just like this and so you just have to make sure and buy the size sheets that both fit the width fit between your studs and also match uh match the amount of the depth um in in your walls uh, unless you do want an air gap, which is actually what we're, we do want an air gap when we insulate these, uh, the ceiling. And so uh, I all we have to do is uh, we can use the same material. And as long as we buy insulation that's smaller than the, the, the area in the stud, uh, we can push it up in there. And as long as we don't push it all the way to the roof, there will, there will end up being an air layer right by the roof and then the insulation closer to the building which is what we want so the other thing that i would say about rock wool is it is it is extremely easy to work with uh we were using bread knives to cut it and so for example right down here i don't know if you can see we've got wiring going through the walls and so where we hit wires all we did is take a bread knife and cut part way through the insulation right where that wire was going to go and then we make a, a little slit where the wire is and so this is how you this is how you install it it really couldn't be easier you basically just take a bat of this insulation and just push it up in there now i'll mention i've got the these are latex gloves on because this since this is spun rock uh insulation some of the some of the particles are kind of like glass and so i noticed when i was working with it without gloves that i would get uh like a little splinter every once in a while and it was not pleasant so i would recommend to anybody who's going to work with with rock wool to wear some gloves 
we like these latex gloves actually for all all the jobs that we have on the farm where we need gloves because they are compostable it's just just latex and so that's that's why we choose them and then we throw them in our compost pile so that that there that's all it is to to install um the the rock wool it in fact it just it just stays in there by the friction uh against the boards but we really don't want this rock wool to to stay exposed um to the interior of the shed besides the fact that better homes and gardens would not come out and give us any awards if the interior of our shed was exposed uh, rock wool the the rock wool fibers um will break down faster if they're getting touched of course you're going to spill your coffee on it it would end up looking terrible over time but the real reason you also don't want to uh, leave them exposed is because uh, this rock wool does let off l little fibers that are irritating to uh, to your lungs. So, in fact, when we were when we were doing this job for real, I was wearing a mask uh, to keep the fibers out. But um, other than that, I really couldn't think of a of a material that's easier to work with than than rock wool. And um, you can f just touching this, I can feel how much cooler this is at a ambient temperature and the, the, the wall on the other side of this was very hot because it's dark colored wall and that's the south side so it's getting hit by the sun. So the next phase of, of finishing off this project was well heck we need we need to find something to cover this up with. What this is 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 called beadboard. I think it's been used for years. I feel like I've seen this in a lot of homes. Um, I think it was made to look like Wayne's coating but um, Basically, this was the cheapest thing that came in big sheets that we could buy. And what we're doing is we're we're tacking it up here with an air nailer. And um, our friends in construction also recommended us because it's so flimsy. I'll show you some of the stuff in a minute. It's almost like the heaviest duty cardboard you could ever think of. It's it's almost uh, uh, it's an engineered wood product but it's almost like super heavy duty cardboard. And they said, because it is relatively thin and flimsy that um, you want to, in addition to tacking it, you also want to glue it down. Otherwise it can tend to move a lot and get it kind of a rippled look over time. So the next thing I'll show you is how we are putting this beadboard up to, um, to finish off these walls. recommended that we use these narrow crown staples because this stuff is so flimsy a, a small nail would have a tendency to go right through um, this this beadboard uh, perhaps and so these staples they're just like little tiny you know very deep but uh, just little tiny staples <laughs> have glue on the back of them so I'm trying to try to get them in good contact with that glue before I put more staples in. And I'm trying to get the staples in the in the seam of the bead just because they're a little less noticeable that way. Ta-da! <laughs>